Dear Lord, we come at set of sun and at your feet we kneel to worship you, creator, king, this day your sign and seal. Our earthly tasks we lay aside according to your word to enter into your holy rest, the Sabbath of the Lord. Sweet Sabbath, rest your sacred hours are a golden chain that reaches back to Eden's gate and points us home again. And when this earth shall be renewed and sin and death destroyed, shall all redeemed each Sabbath day still meet to praise their Lord. Happy Sabbath, my brothers, sisters, and friends. Today is the day that we have looked forward to all week. And welcome to the Vespa Voice. It's a weekly program brought to you by the publishing ministries at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Whitehall Avenue. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I'll invite you to just bow your heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share. We thank you for this year, blessed and holy Sabbath day of rest. As we go now into this little Vespa charge, I pray that your Holy Spirit may be with me and be with all of the other users that are on the platform, dear God. May you grant us your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This week, I am your host. My name is Lowenfield Elaine, and I'm an elder at the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Constant Spring. You know, Sabbath is a sacred period of time that God has carved out as a memorial to creation each week. And he has afforded us the opportunity to share this special time with him. And oh, what a blessing it is. I'm going to be going through a brief charge that I've entitled, Cancelled Jesus. Cancelled Jesus. This brief discourse will be focused on grace. Grace is often misunderstood. It is often misperceived. It's often taken for granted and even often misdiagnosed. Because grace has a twin sister, if you will, and it's called mercy. And on many occasions, persons mistake one for the other. But I like this definition that one author gave. He said, grace is getting what you don't deserve, but mercy is not getting what you do deserve. Let me say that again. Grace is getting what you don't deserve, but mercy is not getting what you do deserve. So there's a distinction between grace and mercy. Let's turn our Bibles to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 4, which is going to be our scripture of emphasis. Galatians 5 and verse 4. I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. Remember, my subject is cancelled Jesus. I want to let you know that if you've cancelled grace, then Christ now is rendered useless. If you cancelled grace, then Jesus is in effect cancelled. It is widely believed that there are three phases of salvation. The, the justification phase, which you are saved from the penalty of sin. And you can read about that in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. The sanctification phase, which is where you are saved from the power of sin. And again, you can read that um, among other places in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 14. And then finally, the glorification phase, which is where you're saved from the presence of sin. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 23. Many persons agree with the justification phase. You know, you're saved from the penalty of sin. They are always on the same page that once you give your heart to, to God, then you're no longer in the bondage of sin. They agree that as, 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 a, as, a, as an individual, you become a new creation because of your decision to walk all the way with Jesus. That's the justification phase. 
we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at the sanctification phase because this is a process that takes place between the two phases. If you will, you could say sanctification is sandwiched between justification and glorification. So during the sanctification phase, you're faced with a daily battle to be more like Christ. You've become public enemy number one to Satan because of your decision to follow Jesus. And the devil keeps developing new strategies to keep you away from your salvation, to give up on your salvation. The strategies may be so simple that you may miss it. Now, the, 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 there are some times when persons will try to hide things in plain and open sight. And I remember a story in terms of a, a brand, a global brand. Now, it, it's a brand that went through a name change without going through a name change. No, how is that? <laughs> how is that possible? If you think about Kentucky Fried Chicken, back in 1991, they made a decision to, to start to focus on the K, the F, and the C. And the CEO, when he was asked and interviewed about the decision that he made, he said, we don't want to focus on fried, nor do we want to focus on chicken because those things will take away from the overall strategy of the company because we're going to be doing so much more and there is a negative health connotation with fried so we don't want to be known for fried so they went to kfc so they actually went through a name change without going through a name change what's the point that i'm making i'm saying things are being hidden in plain sight the devil sometimes will be attacking us. He'll tell you that if you sin, you have to start over again. He'll tell you that you have to go back to ground zero if you mess up. He'll tell you that God isn't listening because you have strayed. But today, I want to tell you that this Christian pathway is not a game of snakes and ladders. It's not that if a snake bites you, that you will fall back down to the to the, to the bottom of the, of, of the board. I want to tell you that your power to sin is never greater than God's power to forgive. Your power of self is never greater than the power of the Holy Spirit. So grace can be canceled and ultimately Christ can be canceled when you focus on trying to earn your own salvation by works. When you focus on the letter of the law more so than the spirit of the law. When you focus on God's law more so than God's love. When you focus on being good more so than being obedient. When you focus on the, your position more so than who gave you that position. We want to make sure that we don't cancel grace and in effect cancel Jesus. Keeping God's law is not your qualification for salvation. Keeping God's law is a part of your identification of salvation. Let me say it again. Keeping God's law is not your qualification for salvation. You don't get salvation because you keep God's law. But by keeping God's law, it's an identification of your salvation because we know that you are his because you kept his law. Because you've been obedient, we know that you are his. So for grace, ye are saved. You know, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, God's grace is unmerited favor. You've done nothing, can do nothing, will do nothing to deserve grace. If that was the case, it would not be called grace. It would be called something else. You are not given salvation by keeping the law, but by keeping the law, you demonstrate to others that you are saved. If you love me, keep my commandments. I want to say to somebody this evening, stop worrying about your salvation. Stop focusing on whether or not you're saved. Stop questioning every single thing that you do, wondering whether or not I have disqualified myself from salvation. You know, the, 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 the whole thing about Santa Claus with his checklist of being naughty or nice 
God is not like that. He's not running behind you with a checklist, putting check marks where you've done something good or you've done something bad. Grace is available to all of us. John 3 and verse 17. I know we recite John 3, 16 a lot, but I want to focus on verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. There's a song that the hoppers do that I love so much. It says, grace will always be greater than sin. Calvary has proven it time and again. Whatever you've done, wherever you've been, God's grace will always be greater than sin. As I close, as I close, I want to share with you some tips to ensure that you keep grace active. You keep grace active when you continue your, in your walk with Jesus Christ, even when you mess up. You keep grace active when you still read God's word, when you still pray to him, even when you feel discouraged. You keep grace active by encouraging someone. Share your own tests that have become your testimonies. You keep grace active when you surrender yourself daily to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You keep grace active when you embrace the freedom that Jesus has provided through Calvary. My brothers and sisters, let's not cancel grace. Because by canceling grace, we would have canceled Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Father and our God, we thank you, God, for being with us even through this little discourse. We thank you that hearts may be touched even by your word this evening. We thank you that your Holy Spirit would have been with us. And as we look forward to spending more time with you in your courts in the, in the hours to come, I pray that you will continue to be with us, continue to lead, continue to take charge, is my prayer and my asking in Jesus' name. I want to tell you thank you for joining us for this, the Vespa Voice. Join us next week, the same time, same place for another iteration. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow in the sanctuary, whichever church you choose to worship. Because I want to tell you that just the mere fact that you're going to be there is going to make that worship experience even richer. But guess what? We also want to elevate the level of the worship we have. And how can you do that? By bringing somebody else with you. Don't be selfish. Bring a visitor. Bring a friend. And I, and I guarantee that we will all have a good time in the Lord. Lastly, I want to implore us to stay far away from sin. Because sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you plan to stay, and cost you more than you plan to pay. Life is short. Death is sure. Sin's the cause, but Jesus Christ is the only cure. Let's not cancel grace and ultimately not cancel Jesus. Have a happy Sabbath, everybody.